What's up, Northwest Disc Golf lovers? We're here at the beautiful McCormick Park for the 2023 Columbia Cup final round. Jesse Tomano and All Day Disc Golf presenting. I'm Jan Zingber, and I have Shade Harrison over here. Say what's up, Shade. What's up, guys? So yeah, we're here for the final round. These are the sponsors here. CH Sports doing it for the love of Northwest Disc Golf and we would love to keep this going so make sure to like and subscribe if you like what you see and we're going to get into a few player interviews to talk about the first two rounds Alrighty, everybody i'm here with dallas garber uh your leader at the 2023 columbia cup through two rounds mm -hmm. uh dallas let, let's go ahead and go through round one first uh what were some of the things that uh went went down in round one you shot nine down round one correct Yes, I shot nine under. Um, I think it was, what, three under on the front nine and six under on the back nine. Okay. So, like, I remember through the first nine holes, I felt really bad about my round. What was kind of the turning point of your round? Was there a specific shot or any kind of just specific moment that took over that back nine? And Yes. So, on hole 11, I made a big putt, but that wasn't really the... Um, go ahead from a good round. Hole 12, short par four, eagle bowl par four. I peered my drive, put it to like 70, 60 feet. Didn't get the eagle, but like having a clean look at eagle on one of those par fours is a big mood changer. Definitely changed my attitude about the round. It made me more, more confident going into the rest of the round. Okay, and uh, moving into round two, what were kind of, what was the, the storyline of round two? Round two, it was just like having fun. I'd say definitely one of my main things is if I can keep a good attitude, positive mindset, I'm always gonna shoot good. Always gonna shoot better than usual. So going into that round, I had no expectations, no mindset really. I just went in, threw some frisbees and had some fun. Yeah. And you were able to put together a 13 down round, which is actually the hot round for the event so yeah. far. Um, what was, kind of uh, some of the things that were going right for you in round two to get you to 13 down? Just putting. I, I went back through, I was 100% from C1 and 100% from C2 throughout the round. Um, I have not missed from C1 so far, so hopefully that stays. Um, yeah, it's mostly putting. Driving is still a little off, but putting and approaches actually. My scramble game is the best it's ever felt in my life right now. I was off the fairway probably 10 times so far these past two rounds, and I've never had an outside 20 foot look for par. Feeling very good on scrambles. Okay, and uh, how are you feeling going into round three? Confident. Again, I'm just gonna try to play like round two. No expectations, no pressure. I'm just here having fun at a really fun course, and gonna, I don't know, we're gonna have fun, I guess, yeah. That's okay. the only way I can put it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Dallas is going to have fun here in round three. Uh, good luck to Mr. Garber, and yeah. we'll uh, catch you on the coverage. All righty, everybody. I'm here with uh, Scott Withers sitting in second here at the Columbia Cup. Yeah. Uh, how did uh, round one and round two go for you? Well, it's McCormick, so I've seen some places of the park that I'd rather not see, and I've thrown some good shots along the way also. Um, it's not a course I'm super familiar with, so I'm kind of, I don't want to say learning as I go, but figuring out where landing spots are and what to throw off tees on these short par fours. So if you're not familiar with the course, all the par fours are under like 550, but they're not really attackable because of the angles and stuff. So it's a learning process to try to figure out like what disc to throw off the tee and how far to leave yourself and everything. So hopefully a couple rounds in now, um, I figured that out a little bit and can get in some spots to be able to score today. And uh, you've, you've been in kind of these situations throughout the entirety of your career, really. Um, what, what does it take in a final round on Sunday in an A tier be able to kind of make a final round push and give yourself a chance to win at least. Yeah, I'm four back going into the round. It's just applying some pressure early. Um, Dallas is really good, up and coming, 15, 16 year old. But, you know, you just lean on the experience and go out and try to throw good shots. There's no nerves on my end. If I play good, I play good. If I don't play good, I don't play good. Like, it's not going to be a nerves thing. Um, but I know. The kid's really good, he's been playing well lately, and he has a lot more career rounds than I do out here. Um, so that's definitely an advantage for him, but we also have a whole ton of people right behind me. So as much as 
you know my take on it. It's first place or I don't really care. But at the same time, you know, this isn't A tier. Like there's money added to it. If I can't win, I'd like to stay in second, but that's definitely not the thought process going into the round. It's full send today. I'm gonna go more aggressive on some tee shots and uh, hopefully they end up in the fairway and not buried in the woods somewhere. Yep. All right, awesome. Thanks, Scott. Cool. Appreciate Alrighty, everybody. I'm here with Cam Messerschmidt, currently sitting in uh, tied for third, going into round three, uh, sitting five back of the leader, Dallas Garber. Uh, how did round one and round two go for you? Round one started out pretty smooth, only missed three holes on the front nine and then just started to slow down after that. There was just a couple of spots where chance to execute and didn't quite make the putt or the upshot. So, but nine down was fine with a few mistakes. You want to shoot double digits out here. And then the second round was kind of just a reverse. The front was super slow, one bogey, and then shot six down out of nine on the back to come back for an eight down bogey. Kept me at eight, so without that, both of them would have been clean nines, which not happy, well, not upset, but you know, execution could be a little bit better. You, like I said, you wanna be at least double digits on these courses, so. Going into today, I feel pretty good. If I can just do what I did on the front in the first and do what I did on the back in the second, we should be able to put together a decent round, and he's got a big enough lead that, you know, it's gonna take something special to catch him, so we're just gonna try and do something like that. You've been in the fire of, of some of these moments before at other points in your career. Like, what, what does it take in a big tournament like this to be able to fight back at such a big deficit? How, how do you keep your, your mental game kind of in, in the round and moving forward? I think because the deficit is so large, it's not, you don't have super, you know, it's not like the anxiety is very high, you know, because he's either going to play well or we're going to try and press the envelope. And if he plays really good, it doesn't matter if we shoot, you know, hot because he's he's got the he's got an advantage. So for me, I think a lot of the times it's really just keeping it just in the backyard. And what I mean is like not make, letting it get too big. I've let that definitely be my downfall in the past is, you know, going into a big tournament, treating it as if it is that. And you got to treat it just like you're playing on your course, practicing during the week. So just try to keep everything in front of me and in perspective. He's got a big lead. So one shot at a time. And down the stretch if he's within reaching, then we're gonna try and do what we can. Sweet, uh, thanks for your time, Cam. Uh, I'd like to give you a quick second to thank any of your sponsors or anybody watching back home. Or Obviously, big shout out to Gateway Discs. They've been supporting me for four years now. This have been absolutely incredible and uh, can't wait to continue that partnership. Uh, I'd also like to shout out North Parco uh, out in Wisconsin and Double Eagle Disc Golf Pro Shop in Bradenton, Florida. So. Awesome, thanks for your time, Cam, appreciate you. it. Thank you, sir. All righty, everybody, here we are with Landon Mordensen, uh, tied for third currently going into round three. Yep. Uh, let's start with round one. How did, uh, round go, how, uh, how did round one go for you? I started off pretty, um, pretty slow. I, um, I didn't really get any birdies. I went birdie bogey, birdie bogey. Um, and then I ended up picking up the final five holes in a row and um, started finishing with a nine down. Okay, uh, so not nine down round one had you tied for second going into round two? Tied for second with like six other people. Okay. There was a bunch of tied for seconds. Okay, and then how did uh, round two go? Uh, round two was like the same thing. I didn't get a birdie till hole six. And um, yeah, then I picked up another four in a row, bogeyed. And then I picked up another four in a row after that. And I just could not birdie after that. My putting was off a little bit. Couldn't get off the tee uh, like I wanted to. Okay, uh, and uh, does any of that kind of change your game plan going into round three, or are we going into the... Um, it, I'm definitely going to just, like, how can I visualize all my shots more? Like, there's two or three holes where I just did not visualize the shot, um, like, or just taking going too fast, and it just made me get not birdies. Just kept parring every hole in the back, so definitely going to change that up. Okay. Um... Real quick, let's give you a chance to thank your sponsors, and uh, we'll, we'll get yeah, into the coverage. Yeah, for sure. Um, thank, definitely thanks to Millennium. I've been getting, I've been throwing them for five or six months now, and it's definitely changed my whole game. Um, and Squatch, obviously, best best sponsors in the game for sure. Boom. And and my apparel sponsor, TLC Creations. Yep. All right, Landon, uh, feeling good going into round three. We'll uh, check you guys on the coverage. All right, all right, there you see it. Dallas Garver with the big lead over Scott Withers, perennial winner here in Oregon. And Cam Messerschmidt and Landon right behind, you know. 
They were saying he's got such a big lead, but this is a very tight course, yeah? Yeah, there's a few trees out there. I'm pretty familiar with all of them, so. At 22 down, coming off setting the course record yesterday at 13 down, out of Gresham, Oregon, Dallas Garber. Hole one, we have a, what is it, 255. It's in a straight pin. These players are going to want to throw a forehand. That's the biggest gap you might see some people try to go up the middle. But uh, you're really just trying to get up under those rocks there and give yourself a putt anywhere between. Those rocks are probably about 40 feet away at, at maximum. Really kind of a must get to start around here, yeah? Absolutely. This is the second easiest hole on the course, and that is really high. It would be kind of a miracle if, it get, if that gets through. Ooh, hit some cabbage, too. Out of Albany, Oregon. Scott Withers. All right, Scotty Withers. Like I said, it's just used to winning around Oregon. This kind of shot is his bread and butter. Anything that's kind of nose uppy, floaty forehand is just one of his absolute best shots. Absolutely. That's yeah, pretty perfect. Right there on the top, it's probably 15 feet away from the basket. From Vancouver, Washington, Cameron Messerschmidt. Scotty with all the quips. He may have learned a thing or two from fellow Oregonian and disc golf conversationalist, Nate Sexton. Gateway Disc Tour Team. 2021 World Putting Champion. How about that? Let's go, Cam. I'm not surprised. He's a great putter. Yeah, kind of a C2 sniper. Absolutely. Ooh, it's inside. And he's putting. And rounding out our lead card from Grants Pass, Oregon, Landon Mortensen. All right. This is part of the Southern Oregon crew, Sows. And uh, he's a young guy really just starting his disc golf career he's been around for absolutely ever been playing since he was a young kid he's really starting to hit his stride and lately been playing really well too i think his last tournament before this was another a tier down in roseburg and i think he had a a pretty good event there as well nice Ooh, that's a bid yeah, he hit that cabbage early way up in that tree. Whoa, Landon. Wide open. Oof. Ooh, wanted it. Yeah, this one, this one's tough to miss. It definitely hurts coming in at the second easiest hole, but like a lot of these holes out here, if you don't get past the first initial trees, it's going to put you in circle two or deeper. Scotty, one of the old, only people rocking the old stork putt where you just stand on one leg and lunge forward. Well, this green, you know, it might bring it out more than others. You, some boulders you kind of have to navigate. Yeah, totally. Nice, Cam taking his time. Getting into the groove, making sure he's focused for this round. Appreciate that. There we go. Definitely hoping for uh, a star frame on this one, but lots of more birdies to be had in the front nine especially. Looks like a gorgeous day. So there we have it. Scotty and Cam got the birds. Landon in Dallas with the pars. Yep, Scott and Cam putting uh, a little pressure on early, closing the gap just one stroke closer. So tell us about hole two here. Hole two is a par four, really specific landing zone. Scott's going to try to throw this about 200 feet on an Anheuser. That's oh. not going to go very far. 
Might have been trying to get a little further, but popular play is this one here, really just chipping it up, trying to give yourself a nice, you know, 200 foot approach, maybe 250 foot on the second. Nice. There is a creek to the right, yeah? There's a creek, and you can see that red Mando sign too, so there's really not a lot uh, variance you can do. This is looking really good. Pretty. It's going to get way up there. He's definitely going to like where he landed. He's probably going to have a pretty short chip shot for birdie. Yeah, Dallas Garber, I think 16 years old, smooth backhand. Absolutely. Ooh, landing going for a little bit more. I don't think that was a driver, but. OB, I don't know about that. We'll see. I don't think he's OB. Scott's electing to take those left gaps, swing it in kind of late. There's water up by the basket. So if you come in kind of hot and get a big yeah, skip, you, you, could, you could go in, but. That looked just about perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely perfect. You can see the gaps that need to be hit. Yep. This is consistent for this course here at McCormick. Yep, he's just gonna try to keep this low to the ground. Mm. Yeah, he's, he'll be putting, but he's not gonna like that effort. Touchy little backhand here. Landon's about 80 feet away from the water. I'm not sure. Okay. He's probably still putting there. Oh yeah. Looked like it kicked forward. Now, Cam is in a, this is a prime landing yeah. spot. That'll work. How far do you think he is? Oh, from there, he's probably only about 120. Oh, Dallas, this looks like, oh boy, maybe 70. I hear he hits these, though. Oh, oh he does, wow. too. Well, you heard it right. <laughs> That's you awesome. Heard right. Yeah. Like he was saying, 100% C1 and C2 last round. Yeah, and that's pushing the back edge of C2, so. Just fire. You can tell. Kid putts with some pace. Yeah, stats don't lie. Yeah, I've been watching that Gannon Burr action. That was close to that tree, too. Really was. Really impressive stuff. Yeah, it is. Takes a lot of guts. Perfect. Great, Nipa. Way to take your time. Balance up. Yeah, this course produces a lot of uh, knee putts, straddle putts, Anheuser putts. Footing can be pretty tricky out here. There we go. A star frame you'd expect, but where Dallas was for his putt, you might think it wasn't going to happen, but. Yeah, this is really a birdie or die course. You know, very few of these holes averaged over par. Yeah, and even if they did, they're barely averaging over par. So you want to get them all, really. But there's, uh, like I said, a bunch of trees and gaps. If you hit, if you miss the initial gap, you're not going to have a birdie putt. This is a prime example of that. There's a, a gap about halfway up this fairway that Scott's looking like he's, looks like he missed, but that is the idea in essence. If you hit those trees though, you're gonna have 100 feet away from the basket. Miss them and you should have a putt just about anywhere. Ooh, the straight line yep. sneaks it through. Caught a late tree, but yeah, he's probably about 45. Max. Yeah, this is a very specific shot. It's much harder than it even looks here on camera. And there's you could get unlucky too and hit the one tree in the middle and kick in the water on the right. Ooh, Ooh Yankees. Kind of bringing that in play, but he didn't get a kick, so. It'll be interesting to see the up from over there. Yeah, we'll see how far over he went. There is a walking path on that left side. Oh, look at that. That's just absolutely parked. That's it. That's the two angle forehand. Yep. Is really what you're looking for here. Ooh. He didn't go too deep, so he's still on the oh, fairway. Oh. Hucks it with the bird. Yeah, that's looking like a nice putter approach there. 
Scott's right at that 100 foot mark that I was talking about if you hit those trees. That gives it a soft bid. Okay, he's a little further than I thought, but still. 2021 World Shutting Putting Champion should have no problem with this bid here. Let's see what it is, Cam. Mm. It's pretty, it's out there. That's a tough putt. There's that grade up by Dallas. Looks like he won't lose much on this one. Except for one, two, Landon. Is Landon, that? who's parked. I believe he's that blue disc right there. I think so, too. Everyone tapping in here. You can see this is some classic Oregon disc golf. Look at the giant ferns back there. Mossy oak trees mixed in with, you know, the big conifers. It's a really beautiful Oregon summer golf. Yeah, it doesn't get much better. It's a very pretty property. There we go. Landon. Getting a stick on everyone there. Tightening this group right up. Yep. Love to see it. This is one of my favorite holes out here. It's so pretty. Not a lot of low branches on these trees, so. Mm, maybe a little early there. Yeah, so they're playing to that right position. It's about a 300-foot forehand. If he cut that corner there, I'm sure he threw that 300. He, he's probably going to be putting for birdie. Ooh, it's got to miss wide. that, and it's perfect. Oh. oh, I said it. Late tree. Yeah, there is a lot to miss. Normally, you want to see just a little bit more flight. Yeah, I kind of like what Cam's doing here and starting with a little flex to get it to drag in late. That's it. Yeah, yeah, pretty textbook. That's how this hole wants to be played. Or like this, too. Backhand turnover. If you can get it to fade in real late at the end oh dang he started that on some serious hyzer yeah oh. those are the ones i don't think you can come in from that block. yeah i think it turned over a little early tricky obstructed putt here looks like he's opting to go on the well maybe he is going to go on the hyzer side look how guarded this green is yeah that last tree is probably about 30 feet away from the bucket oh not a bad bid no not at all I wonder if Scotty's going to do the same thing here. Yep. Come on. Tis the it looks line. like it caught something. And I'm not sure where Landon is. He but went early. It's probably about for 50. Sure. Oh, yeah. 50 foot bid there. Oh, here's a real chance. So he went long. Yeah, just Tough slightly. To do. Pretty, pretty textbook. There we have it. Cam really taking his time on those putts, boy. It's smart, yeah. He wants uh, it. That's a, for another stroke on the card. Sometimes I wonder with folk who take that much time and have that many pump fakes, if there's a little right. nerves in there driving all that. Yeah, you wonder what's going on between the ears a little bit. but I think that's one of the most impressive things about Ooh. Isaac Robinson and his putting is just – how calm centered he is. Oh yeah. Walking up and just putting that thing. Yep, he puts like it's out of his hands. It's gonna go in, it's gonna go in. And he pretty much always does. Nice, so that kind of forehand that came through, just perfect, dragging it over a little bit. Yeah, that's the key I think there, the key takeaway. And he gets it, tightens it up even a little bit more. Yep, anyone's game.
I think there's some pretty close scores on the chase card too, if I remember right. Interesting play here. Looks like. Oh, you heard it. I don't think the distance is right in there. Yeah, no that's. Way this is short of the right I'm actually not sure if that was a thumber or a tomahawk, but he's really just trying to get through these first trees because. If you don't, you're not really birdie in this one. Oh, that's pretty. That it could be long. They call it 226. I think it's probably further than that. I think it's so downhill, too. so you're probably throwing it 226, but probably want this thing to dr drag at least 300 feet. There really are many plays here. Some people hyzer. Yeah. Some people just go straight at it through that middle gap. If you're gonna pick the biggest gap, it's this one Scott's going for here. Looks like he caught that one on the right. Easy to do, but birdie's out of play for him. Ooh, looks like Dallas is going the wider route. Could be. And he is. Oh. Yeah, it looks like there's some trees over there, too. And that's the danger. It might be the biggest gap. I've never actually looked that far right. I like Scott's line. Yeah, with some with an overstable approach disc. Yeah, absolutely. Come oh, on, Dallas. Great bit. Every bit of 100 something feet there. Dang, Just man. Coming in with pace. Been watching a lot of Cole Rodal and running those things. You gotta spin them. Where is this basket? Yeah, he's quite a ways away. He's putting it up. Yeah, if it, any of those trees, you're hard pressed to make a putt. I'm curious to see where Landon is. I think he's pretty parked. I think so too. Yeah, this is actually pretty surprising how how far these bids are. Oh, he's deep. Oh, yep. He went deep. Mm, Outside the really, circle, huh? Really good try. Look at that. Landon's nope. had a couple knee putts already. Straddled awkward obstructed putts. And we're only five holes in. Yeah, well, you better get used to it, McCormick. You got to get used to it. <laughs> that's what it gives you. Wide open 30-foot putts here are just not – they just don't happen, really. There's some ba some elevation in the back nine, too. Speaking of elevation, this next hole is one of the prettier holes on the course. I would guess it's probably got about 30, 40 feet of elevation at a probably 330-foot distance and it's an uh, elevated pin up on a big rock. Nice. Well, we're gonna go into a little break here for some advertising and those who make this happen. All right, we're back, hole six. So you were saying? It is a very uphill hole, um, 330 distance, uh, but it probably plays closer to 380. These guys are gonna be wanting to throw pretty hard to get all the way up the hill. If you go long, that's a great problem to have. If you catch any of these early trees, it could be a tricky scramble for sure. Ooh, nice laser. Yeah, get a skip up to the top. He'll be putting pretty close from the top. A few trees to beat, but definitely a makeable putt from there. Interesting forehand play by Cam. I like it. It, it opens the gap up. It's really just taking out of taking these first trees out of play that will give you bogeys if you hit them. That's perfect. So good. Yep, yeah, that's hit a little something. That's a drop in. It looks like. Dallas has been on a bit of the par train. Let's see if he can get something going here. 
This is a great birdie to pick up. Pretty flip up. Looks like it flips a little much. It's that last tree. This does come in at the hardest hole in the course. It does, doesn't it? Mm. That's a good kick. All right, we got some putts here. Dallas really wants to hit this one to get his round going. Mm. Oh, right on line. Oh, he wanted it. Yeah, oh, yeah, he did. It's all right, young fella. You got this. Is this outside? I would say walk that one. Yeah. If you, if you think it there is we go. This is the conversation about being inside or outside, and it's really a call by the card, so they're doing their due diligence. What they decide here? I don't know if I caught that. Well, it looks like he's lining up in a different way. I'm going to say that he is inside. I don't think the straddle is Landon's preferred putt, but it doesn't seem to matter. Really great balance, taking his time on that. Yeah. So Scott must be pretty parked. Those trees may be in play from his angle here. You might have to shape something around them. Yeah, it looks like he went between them. Yeah, he did. Love that. You can see this is a pretty cool pin placement. Oh, yeah. Is it actually drilled into that rock? It is. It's, it's a stable basket, too. Scott. That's a great birdie <clears throat> on the hardest hole in the course. There we go. Looks like uh, scores are tightening up here. Yeah, only seven birdies in the pro field on that hole. That's great. There we go. The grouping gets even tighter. Landon and Scott get it. Cam and Dallas with work to do. And I'm sure uh, Dallas is feeling a little bit of pressure with Scott Withers on his Charging, table. yeah. Bunch of good golfers. And who knows what that chase card's doing, too. There's lots of birdies to be had in those first six holes. So This is such a fun hole. They stretched it back right. and made a par four out of it. And uh, I think he just got a kick to the perfect spot. Players with the big forehand could get the two on this one. It shapes up for a big forehand S shot. Uh, these guys are likely going for the, the birdie. Scott caught another one. No B cam here, so it's hard to tell exactly where these things land. Right. They really want this thing to... That's a little wide, but they really want this thing to go about 300, 330 feet, give themselves a nice uh, chance to go through a gap on the next shot. Excited to see what it looks like. Dallas needing to put something to get the birdie in play here. A little early. It's not going to like it. So what's the shape here? So he's going to try to keep this on a lot of hyzer. Um, there's a late gap, probably about 150 feet in front of him. He's going to try to have to make it first and then get that thing way right. Not sure it made it back. Yeah, I'm not sure it did either. So Dallas is actually, he's lined up perfectly with the gap to the basket, but he's probably oh. about 300 feet away and look at this patent pending patent through a pending. hallway with a height restriction here and that might be a high-speed disc he's throwing i can't tell it's absolutely perfect it looks like just pure yep he's gonna like it 16 years old y'all yep scott making it look easy hit a tree but it dropped him right in the perfect area This is definitely, this hole and the next two are going to be a little difficult 
uh, without a B cam, That's but we'll do our best note. to describe them. It's uh, pretty much three par fours in a row. Oh, nice. Very technical shots. You can tell Landon, he was talking beforehand. He wanted to visualize his shots, did a really great job visualizing that scramble. To steal a birdie from out of position. Getting a little frisky with it. Ooh, looks like the rest of the whole seven was corrupted. Look, they all had putts. You know, Colin Hayden, CA Sports, doing his best out here, dealing with the technology. Oh, Dallas Garber ends up with the bogey. I thought he was in there for possible birdie chance. So that green on the backside, if he ran his putt from out of position, uh, it drops off quite a bit and mm. can put, give you a circle two coming back. It's a, it's a newer green, I think, so it's a little rough in my opinion. Newer green and yeah. also new game, tie ball game at the top. Yeah, that's a, a pretty critical bogey for Dallas there. This whole, there's a Mando and looks like he just made it and just. thank goodness he did because it is pretty impossible to save a par from this drop zone. You can see the gaps here and the Mando. I mean, this actually reminds me a little bit of, of uh, Carolina disc golf. Right, and if you look up in the top left, you'll see that this is a 358-foot par four. Now, I think that's if you draw a straight line to it. This is an extreme dogleg left. So these players are going to want to just throw probably a 250-foot shot, make the Mando, and then throw another 90-degree shot to the left to give themselves a birdie. Definitely can be a routine birdie, but bogey comes in. That looked a little that? low. You think he missed the Mando there? I don't think he missed the Mando, but I do think he hit the base of it or one of the many rocks on this fairway. So he's going to be probably pretty close to the drop zone, and you'll see how hard it is to get up and down from there. Normally you want to throw a little higher. Oh, going the wide route, and that's what happens when you go wide. The Mando gets in your head. It's a short shot, but, you know, if you pull it too far right like that, you're going to be in a world of hurt. All right, Dallas really looking to recover. It looks like he's got a slower speed disc here. He's going control. Yeah, that's the play. A lot of, a lot of guys will go putter, approach discs, stable approach discs. You can try to cut the corner, but it's not going to do you really any favors. There's not a way to park this. Oh, that's... That is missing. That it. is brutal. Yep, that's... Absolutely brutal. I know because I missed it twice. There you go. Yeah, this is about his only option here. He's going to try to throw this as high as the ceiling lets him and try to carry this all the way left. And it looked like it got through somewhat. I did not hear a sound. That is incredible. There are yeah. so many branches to hit up there. Mm -hmm. here's, here's your drop zone. Same sort of philosophy. You've got to throw it as high as, the, as you possibly can, and you do have to get lucky. I was able to save the par from the drop zone by hitting one of these trees, kicking and carrying it all the way to the green. And I truly think that might be the only way to do it. But prove me wrong here. I heard a tree. So we'll have to see where he ends up. Yeah, he's kind of in a bogey at best situation here. Scott got a good kick, it looks like. He has a chance to make this second shot up, up onto the green. Well, I guess it's putting then. <laughs> Looks like it got lucky. Going up that left side like he did, you can see all those trees. Land is going to be trying to swing this kind of wide right and bring it into the another rocky green. He's in a great spot, though. Yeah, textbook. This is how... Looks very pretty. This is how you get an easy three on this hole. If you don't have a, a perfect drive, it's just it's really not easy to make happen. See if he's running this. Pretty good up there. That's a there. Perfect, perfect layup. Yeah, it's actually rare in Oregon disc golf, Northwest disc golf, to get a wooded area that is this cleared out. Well, it takes pretty much a decade of stomping down. This course <laughs> did not always look so so uh, flat. 
Yeah, exactly. Without all the ferns and other things that are growing in the underbrush. Absolutely. All right. Scott's got a bid at something. Oh, he stole one. How about that? Amazing. What a putt. That, that does drop off behind the basket. In fact, I think I heard Dallas say after his approach, he's 40 long. And that's really not where you want to be on this green. It, it drops off quite a bit, and there's lots of shrubs. Really appreciate how he how he controlled the speed to drop that thing in. Yeah, I mean, if Scott missed that, he wouldn't be going down the hill. He'd be bailing out left. True veteran there. Lots of right to left movement on that putt. Committing to the hyzer. Yeah, that's a big putt and a big, big moment. Cam looking to stay in the hunt here. This yeah. would be a great save. It would be an insane save from where he was. Come on. That was his forehand Anheuser? That's how he does it. Oh. Oh, wait. No, something. I, yeah. I think I missed something there. Yeah, we must have. But still, amazing putt. From Absolutely. what looks like 45. Oh, yeah. Every bit of 45. Death putt. He had a lot of direct energy on that putt. If it misses at all, that's not going to be a close comebacker. Really great control. Kept it right on the pole. So not quite 40 long, but he did go off that back edge a little bit. If he was 40, he would be dealing with a lot more shrub. Still great bogey save. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's realistically the best you can do from the drop zone. Dallas really showing off that direct putt. And there's Landon with the solo, or I guess there's two birds on this one, but a really great get. Textbook playing this hole. Absolutely. And look at that. Scott's opened up a two-stroke lead just through eight holes. Oh, sorry. Wait. Oh, two-stroke two lead over Dallas. It's uh, Landon. Creeping playing up. some solid, sneaky golf. Yeah. Hitting those obstructed straddle putts. And just made that hole look really easy. So, this hole's similar to the last one we just played, but it goes dogleg right. So, these players are trying to go 250 to 300 on a big skipping forehand. Trust in the stability of his disc there. Kinda. Yeah, that was a great looking shot. If he got the ground play too, he might be way up there. The more right you get, the more birdieable this hole becomes. But the big thing off the tee here is to get at least 200 feet up, 250 feet up this fairway. See what Cam's got here. He's been kind of dragging him over. This one's kind of like that too. Oh, it's a little pretty. sawed off. You think he's got something over there? Uh, they're clapping, so I, I could have seen that wrong. But if you don't go far enough and get that thing moving right, you find yourself probably the most obstructed area on this entire course. There's so many jail yeah, trees. Right. Nice. Great shot. These guys, I think, are all in position to score here. Scott's going to try to throw a fl literally low flex forehand here. How far do you think this is here? Uh, he's probably about 330 feet, so... He's going to want to keep this real low and on a tight flex. This is technical. Two angles. There's the first one. Second one's panning out. That's got to be good. Bad. He's in the circle. Should be putting. Mm, he might have fluffed it. It's getting through, though. He'll be putting up there somewhere. This basket's on a mound. A little soft. Yeah. You can tell he kind of didn't pull the pull the shot all the way through you on that. You can tell these folk are a little bit longer than the desired landing zone. Makes the gap way smaller. Yeah, I kind of like what Dallas decided to do there. He he really just wanted to make that gap as big as possible. He was a little too far out of position left off his drive. So he's he's going to try and set himself up for a long putt. And Cam with the, the best drive of the bunch looks like he just routine up uh, yeah. He'll be putting for a bird. Yeah, he was able to get way up close to that gap off the tee. Really impressed at Dallas and the amount of power he gets on these putts. Yeah, I, I, 
I hope this play works out for him. I don't know if he hit a tree on his approach or what. He did. It's up there. Still, the fact that he really is looking to make that from what looks like. Yeah, he was what, out of position. Absolutely. 80, yeah. 90 feet. Elevated you know? 80 footer. Mm. Ooh, that's a tough miss. That's so frustrating. Especially with him being in the hunt here. Yeah, especially because I think we're coming up to... Scott went a little long, but he's not too worried about this putt. If, if he airballs it, it could be trouble, but I don't foresee that happening. I totally jinxed that. <laughs> he hit a tree. He hit a it's tree, so he's fine. When that tree is there to pull it a little <laughs> bit right. High chains. Did him dirty. Sorry, Scott. All right. He made the comebacker. Landon Landon is very happy that that just happened because he was thinking in his head he was about to lose another stroke to Scott. And Cam, just textbook. It doesn't get much better. Going to take his time. Yeah, he doesn't want to. I mean, this is for a, a stroke on the card now. And it is in. Great bird. Talk about building some momentum for Cam. Just hit a big putt on the last hole, saved a great par. Awesome stuff. This, uh, these next couple holes are going to be nice and easy to commentate because you'll be able to see the basket. Um, there are some short par threes. Give these guys a little break from the technical par fours. Not to say we won't jump right back into those, but. Look at that grouping. Love it. We got a battle here. We're done with our front nine and back nine coming right up. This is championship time. We don't get many A tiers here in Oregon. So a lot of money, a lot on the line.